here I am back in the shop after three wonderful weeks up in the US, uh, of which the most magical uh, two days was spent in a workshop in Annapolis. Um, this workshop was put on by Admiralty Models, um, David uh, Anshul and Greg Herbert. And I met 19 wonderful modelers like myself, like you. And really, I encourage you that if these opportunities come up to attend workshops, um, that you take advantage of it because it really was special. And I'll do everything in my power to attend the next one next year, which is going to be in Niagara around the same time, September, October. Of course, while I was there, I did pick up a few toys, which I'll go through with you. But um, just a little quickie on the course. It was a course on the basics of carving. So we all had to acquire tools. And uh, I did uh, a lot of research, again, with the help of both Greg and David, as to which were the best miniature carving tools to, to have. And there are two suppliers that are at the top of the list. The first is, I believe, is Russian. And I actually got to see um, David's set of tools, and they're absolutely fantastic. Because of the embargo, those were not available. Um, second, a close second, was um, Dockyard dockyard tools and these were bloody good tools and again I'll highly recommend them. So let's take a look at some of these wonderful tools. The first are from dockyard tools in the USA. Um, again fantastic, uh, had to wait about three weeks to get them. I also bought a honing block and some of the paste that comes with it. The biggest challenge is learning how to sharpen these tools and again David spent a lot of time going through with us the simple way of doing this um, and I haven't got it down pat yet but I have to say um, it doesn't require a large block, a 1200 piece of um, paper up to 1500, finding the correct angle and simply running the, the piece over the sandpaper and then honing it on the block. This block has all the shapes, both, both the curved and angled pieces, um, so it really helps you um, get a higher quality strop. These are some of the pieces um, that we made up in the course. Um, you can see they're quite in, intricate and really was um, quite revealing. And we would start on a larger piece, learn how to carve that piece and then come on to the smaller piece, um, eventually onto this absolutely beautiful piece. And then finally, we looked at doing some scrolls. So it really was a wonderful exercise and the long and short of it is, I have a long way to go um, to be able to do these pieces freehand. And I got a kit from Cyrene Model Ship Company, and this is the steering wheel assembly for the Thorn. Um, so that is fantastic. And then the most important part, I'm going to just put this off to the side, is this stand um, which allows me to hold a camera. Um, this is the Morcosa. I hope I got that correct. And this is for making things that require really great close-up work. Um, so I have, still have some work to do and sort this out. And of course, it, you can put your iPad in and hook directly into it. Um, or you can use, as in my case, um, I have my old monitor at the back, which I'll hook everything into. Well, enough of that now. We've had enough on training. So let's get back to the real purpose of these um, videos, and that is to record my build on the thorn as I go along. It's interesting in the build that both David and Greg seem to have a different approach to tools. Um, David seems to like hand tools, and so there's a lot of the, the work um, using chisels and Greg on the other hand is very much like me, likes power tools 
And um, you'll see in, in book three that Greg uses his mill a lot to do a lot of the um, cutting of the various pieces. This shelline mill is, is fairly old. Um, I've had it over oh, for at least 15 years and really is a fantastic tool. So if you can pick up a second hand one, because uh, it's really hard to justify buying a new one for the limited amount of mill work that we do on the, on the boats. But it really is fantastic. And then this little um, table for turning the piece really helps when you're trying to line up a piece. Um, that you line up the, the mill to the center of the hole and then you can simply move move the piece to the left or the right and line it up and then of course you move it in and out. Um, perhaps the biggest challenge is finding things to clip the piece on because it has to be really very hard. And um, this simple little clamp, this is one of them that I use quite often. And then there's another one um, that uses oops, the same system. Again, a bolt, um, a screw that fits in here. And then these just simply fit there we go. Simply fit in and you tighten the screw down and it'll clamp in place. So Sherline, um, there are many other small mini lathes, but this certainly is my preference. Sherline supplies a number of end mills. Um, I bought two of them here. One is 1 16th, um, which gives you a 3 inch slot. And the other one is a 3 64th, which gives you a 2 and a half inch slot. And that's what we've used here um, to make up the slot uh, for these blocks. Now we're going to make up the chest tree and this is made up from a 5 inch stock that is um, shaped until it fits perfectly on the side of the, of the model. Um, it starts at 5 inches at the top and tapers down to 1.5 inch and the sole purpose of it is to hold a 5 inch sheave that takes the main sheet line that comes out of that block, uh, that movable block on the side of the, um, of the vessel. The sheave is two inches thick. Um, in this case, it's made of brass, um, but you can make it out of wood. In fact, in those early days, many of the sheaves may have actually been made out of lignum vitae. These slots um, are always a challenge. Um, you can try and do them by hand, um, by drilling two holes and then slowly cutting them out. Um, I've done that in the past, but there's no question that the mill is going to give you a perfect slot every time. Still, I cut um, the left side, then the right side, then the middle, and then move the mill end up and down. This is a 3 64th um, inch uh, mill end. And then when that's completed, I'll use a file and open it up and clean it up. This was a fail piece that I made not using the mill. And this is the piece made on the mill. We've had to make up a new scraper, which fits the five inch width. And so we'll just start to put the marks on it. Another way of doing this, when you have a very fine line at the edge of a piece and the piece is a straight piece, you can use a marker gauge and um, it'll work very nicely on one side and then you switch it around and you put it on the other side. Oh my, I'm not doing such a great job on it. Um, but what you're getting is a nice neat line on either side and that will reflect more what David shows in the book. We have pinned it in and of course squared it off. Um, the most important thing is that the bottom of the sheave in the piece must line up with the removable block 
because the sheet comes through the removable block into the sheave. Now we're just going to do a trial fit with the covering board and um, clearly I have to take down the top of that so it's flat and it's just ready to fit the brush sheave. So we've fitted the brass sheave, you can see it, put a pin in it from the back. And so now we're just going to add a little wipe on poly. Of course, this time we'll, like before, put it on with a brush. We put two coats on. Then once this is dry, and sand it, stick it on the model. And we'll just cut this tree nail out. We'll put the other two tree nails and then clean up the piece. Now it's time to install the waste rail or waste molding as we commonly refer to it. And you will see from there that we're going to be cutting it up into various pieces. And that gives us a challenge of getting a nice continuous line all the way along. So to solve that problem, the book suggests that we create a button, which we've done on both sides. And that button will make sure when we put the individual pieces that each one lines up perfectly with the other. The only place that we are going to leave out is at the back, the rail stern here and at the bow because they have some interconnecting pieces that is better to do that at a later point in time. So we'll simply put the mouldings away and then take them out when, when we're ready to deal with those issues. And I just had another request about how I bend moulding and this is a form I'm using so when I apply the moulding um, it gets a nice continuous line. So we're just going to bend this and to show you how easy it is. And that's done. And so we take that off now. Again, all we want is an approximate bend. And when we fit it, it fits perfectly on the model. Now it's time to install the waste molding. So we take out these pieces, which we had made quite a long time ago. And again, I'm gonna put two coats of wipe on poly on them. And I'll do this with a brush, simply because we wanted to get it right inside all the various curves. And we're going to put at least two coats, maybe as much as three. And then between each coat, we need to sand it, get all those little burrs off. The first thing we're going to do is take some measurements. And I cut them a little long. And now we'll cut them on the preac. Normally I'm very pressed to get everything done in the video that I want to. Fortunately, 
This time I have five minutes left and so I'm going to just briefly show you a visit we had to the U.S. Naval Academy Museum where our guide was a gentleman called Grant Walker who is an educational specialist and knew stories about every single model in the museum. And if that wasn't enough, at the end of the day, we were taken downstairs where they repair and service all the models. And Don Priel, I hope I've got his name correct, who is a curator, um, showed us his shop, a dream shop for all of us, and with all the tools you could possibly want. So here, without any commentary, are some of the models that are shown in this. And you have to remember that having gone through this museum, it actually ranks as probably one of the best in the world. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little interlude. Um, I certainly enjoyed taking the pictures and bringing them to you. 
So we'll see you in the next video. And remember, keep modeling.